next uh, business plan presentation will be from Gabenga Sesan from Paradigm Initiative, Nigeria. Good morning. Let's face it, I shouldn't be here today. I say that because about 17 years ago, I was a young man in secondary school, high school, who knew that his destiny was to end up somewhere at the bottom of the pyramid, way below the poverty line. But something happened to me. While I was in secondary school, our school got some things. I didn't know what they were, but eventually I found out that they were computers. I wanted to learn how to use them, but the teacher told me straight, looking in my eyes and said, you can't learn how to use them. They're too complex for you. But the reason was because he didn't know how to use the computers himself, so it was easy for him to say I would never know how to use the computers. But I made up my mind I would learn how to use the computers, and somehow I got really curious. I learned how to use computers, and it changed my life. One email, one essay competition, and then I got the International Telecoms Union Fellowship, traveled to South Africa in 2001, and I returned to Nigeria with a promise. And the promise was if this thing, in quotes, called technology could change my life the way it did, then I would extend this opportunity to as many young Nigerians as possible. And that is why sometime 2007, after I earned enough money, I thought it was enough money to change the world at the time, I resigned from paid employment and chose to start Paradigm Initiative Nigeria. And the vision was very simple. Help the 30 million plus young Nigerians who, by the way, might even be way below the poverty line where I was, to get above that poverty line and increase the productivity of the country and eventually be able to help the country, and not just the country themselves and their families. And that is why one of the key problems we have in Nigeria today is unemployment. A minister of education recently said that 10% of university graduates, university graduates, would get a job two years after leaving school. What did the 90% do? What did the other millions of young people who don't even have the chance to go to university do? One of the reasons why I love to talk about Nigeria is because we're quite popular. Unfortunately, popular for the wrong reasons. Chances are that some of you in this room have received emails sometime in the last few hours from somebody who claims to be a Nigerian prince and is promising you millions of dollars and has promised to return some to you. Now, those are the problems. These are frustrated young people who have assumed that they would never get a job anyway, and have consoled themselves that, well, at least if I defraud somebody, I can get something done. I was lucky. Destiny and Funke are not as lucky as I am. Their parents have told them, well, you've gone through secondary school. I've tried my best. Let's save some money. Let me allow your younger ones to also go to secondary school, and we can continue like that. And that's why the value proposition of what we do is to empower these young people with ICT, entrepreneurship, and life skills so that at least they can improve their livelihoods. And what we've seen happen is when they improve their lives, they also improve the lives of their own families. And we've got a huge waiting list since we started the program. We, you know, we basically have at least four times the number of applications than we can actually train. And we take them through a process which we have called ajegunle.org. Ajegunle is the name of the most popular slum in Nigeria. And ajegunle, by the way, even though it's a slum known with crime, the meaning of that name in our local language is wealth resides here. What an irony. And we, we will have 180 graduates by the end of the year. We have a high completion rate because these are young people who have seen other people who went through the program and are willing to have their lives changed also. The way the program works is that they can't afford to pay for the training anyway. So we allow them to come on the training. We defer the payment. It's a deferred payment model where when they start earning an income, they pay 10% back to the project. And of course, you can be sure they're glad to pay that because they were basically earning $0. And now on the average, they earn about $1,200 in a year, which is averagely about $100 in a month. We've got a couple of partners at the moment because of what we do. And one of the key partners we have is Microsoft that has become very interested in the problem of cybercrime. And one of the things we intend to do eventually is to work with these people that are locally called Yahoo Yahoo boys and girls who are the cyber criminals to train them using the same model that we use presently at ajegunle.org. And what we basically do is we invite the young people, you know, we introduce them to the project. And one critical part of what we do now is to interview them, to ask them questions. Because
because we want to be sure that the people we're training are those who, after going through the process, will be able to have enough passion and conviction to also be able to train other people. And of course, we have an orientation program where what we do is basically invite trainees who have become graduates of the project to come talk to them. And that makes it very interesting because one year ago, Destiny used to know Famous. And he knew Famous was just as disadvantaged as him. But now he knows that Famous has gone through a process that has made him become what in Nigeria you would call a big boy. And he also wants to become himself a big boy. And so we take him to an ICT training program, entrepreneurship training, and one of the key things we say to them is entrepreneurship is not about waiting for your first huge capital to start a business. Start with what, we can, what you can do right now. And some of them have started with things as simple as those who can make shoes and are beginning to earn income from that now. And of course, when they start earning an income, we try as much as possible to connect every graduate with an internship opportunity. And the reason we do that is because if we train them and throw them out there, we leave them worse than they were because then they get frustrated again. And as much as possible, one of the things we do is that before they graduate, each person has to train five other people. And it's like a relay training model. What we want to do now is we want to do this beyond the present location where we are, which is Ajegunle. We have seen that it work, this works in Ajegunle. And you know what I say to people is that if this can work in Ajegunle, then it probably can work anywhere else in Nigeria. We want to get into the six zones in Nigeria. We want to strengthen our strategic alliances so that possibly we can work, instead of, we need a facility that can train a lot of people, but instead of paying to get a facility like that, we can get a university that can partner with us to take to give us the space. We want to grow our job placement capacity so that everybody who goes through the training is able to get a place where they can start off. We can connect them with the world of work. And of course, one of the key things we can do to achieve that is to start deploying ICT services ourselves because we have all those graduates that we have trained that we're trying to place in different companies. But if we are able to start working with them and send them out as, in quotes, consultants to work with other organizations, then we can also and an income from that process. And we also have the opportunity of training them with you know, advanced training for our graduates, which means that they have earned income and now they can pay back. And this is what our financials look like, you know, our figures look like at the moment. And multiplying this opportunity, by the way, I should tell you that Destiny, who has now gone through the training, us, gone through an internship, has an internship opportunity to work with a financial services company. And also, the same thing with Funke. Funke, after our internship program, was able to use the knowledge that she gained while she was an intern to build a small business. She got a loan of about 2,000 Naira, which, of course, is very small, $33. And she has grown that to a, you know, by about 2,000% now. Over the next five years, four to five years, we're looking at 6,500 people who will be able to tell their stories just like Deborah and like Funke, who will, of course, in turn, train about 32,500 people. And we want to be able to grow the income of our graduates from, it used to be $0, basically, and now they earn an average of $3. We want to be able to grow that to at least about $6. And for this, we need grants of about $200 every year for the next four to five years. And one of the key things that we've been able to do in the last few years is put together this publication called Echoes from Ajegunle. And it basically chronicles the stories of young people who have gone through the training. And they are now telling other young people and anyone who cares to listen how their lives have been transformed. And I know how they feel when they tell the stories because I've been there. Thank you. Kavenga, very well delivered. Love the energy. Love you know, the way you articulate your business. Uh, I wondered, uh, as I was listening to you, whether or not there was a local language translation for Monster Job Board. <laughs> <laughs> because I think that you're right at the crossroads of uh, how young people who are now trained and skilled and perhaps even doing an internship providing value to a local business, you're right at the crossroads to how they get employed. The other uh, thought I had was if you were starting to control more of that employment or placement into a real job rather than just an internship, a pretty easy step, I think, if you're already doing the internship placement, uh, you can control the quality of the, uh, how well the, the employee has or your class um, uh, student has been, uh, has been performing his work. The final thing is, it occurs to me, it certainly is true in, in other economic uh, areas, that the employer might pay you 
for the privilege of hiring a worker, especially if they've already had a chance to try the, the, the worker in an internship. So you may consider that as a piece of your uh, business model. Uh, Sue, I'll turn it to you. Sure. I, I have to agree. It was a very engaging presentation, and I loved your use of humor uh, and stories. Uh, one of the things that, that comes across to me uh, is that you are talking about training, and it, it, it doesn't come across clearly as to where they go after. And it, it, it sort of builds off of what John was saying, which is you are now only getting them into internships, but where are those internships, and what does it mean? The other part is that you talk about, they, and I like the model, which is that they give back 10% as it relates to their treasures and when they increase their, their play. I would also say there's talents and time, and I would encourage you to really get them to give back, particularly in some of these core competencies that you're talking about, which is placement, HR, for example. Since they've been through the experience, some of them might want to grow in situ, right, of, of, of really being able to actually contribute back. So nice model. Thank you. That's it. Sure. There were two things that were really clear to me, and I really enjoyed them in, in, my, in my mind are the foundation. One is that the individual um, goes to your school, makes more money, pays some back, and it seems like for the individual that works microeconomically. What I would have loved to hear with more clarity is does that work for your center? Does their $300 times X students work for your center? Because if I trust your microeconomics, then I trust that it would scale. I was missing that one piece. Two, two parts I thought were a little bit extraneous and, and took away from the clarity. One was the one person trains five others. That to me starts to get into the ripple effect economics that don't really affect your core business. And the other is that you might want to go into business as an outsourcing service company. If you kept it clean to these two things really work microeconomically and I'll build a great employer brand, that to me is such a clean story Then I'd say all you need is working capital to finance and then I think it would be very easy to raise capital. Easy, in quotes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'd just like to build on Ted's comments, and this I always say this, it's really important for me to be able to understand the unit economics. What does it cost to build one training center? How many students can that train? And what percentage of the graduates need to actually have to pay the 10% back for this to work, and over what period of time? And if the, the, the economics of that work, then you know you have a scalable model. But very, very good idea. Okay, if I go, we want to give you a chance to respond to our comments. So. Okay, um, of course, I, I should say thank you for, for the feedback on that. I agree with you. The, the, the economics of the, the students is straightforward, but for the center, for the next few years, it doesn't pay for the expenses for, of the center. But in the financials, one of the things you would see is that over time, that happens. And one of the things we want to start with is we want to start training, we want to start deploying our RCT services locally so that eventually one of the big things we want to do is to become the major outsourcing destination for companies that want to do digital services. And that, of course, you know, would be very interesting for our model. So I'd move that from the financials up to the front so I understood where you were on center economics, and that would be the basis of my trust in your scalability. Okay. But be careful you don't compete with your customers. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Thank you so much. And, um, when I finished putting this presentation together yesterday, this came into my inbox, a message from one of our recent graduates who was basically saying, thank you for making me believe in myself. The program has given me knowledge, access, and leverage. Thank you for believing the youth of Ajegunle. And these are the kind of stories that we heard that tell us that we're not only building a brand, we're not only building an institution, but we're truly, truly changing lives. Thanks to everyone. Thank you.